I've fitted LED strips to a number of my models now and have found it very useful flying in winter light and also around dusk particularly helping with orientation and I wanted to put a little video together to show you how to do it relatively inexpensively using these kind of LED strips on a roll and to show you a couple of things so to show you the different types that you can buy what that actually means talk about the LED sizes talk about the different types waterproof versus non waterproof the colors that you can get talk a little bit about the wiring, show you how to make the wiring up so that you can connect them, how to solder it and also go through a little bit of a diagram of how you actually um, attach them to the electrical system on your model. But first of all let me very quickly show you what uh, they look like when they're on the model. So here's a short video with my smaller quad. Uh, the LEDs that are on the ends of each of the arms are the LEDs that we're talking about today. The strip in the middle, as you can see, changing colour. That's the Hobby King 9 colour LED strip and you can find more about that in one of my other videos. This other quad is my larger 440 class quad and has red LEDs at the front and white at the back. They're actually controlled by a switch on the remote control so you can turn them on and off in flight. And again I'll show you how that was done and what you need to make that happen. But first we'll zoom in and we'll talk about the actual strips themselves. There are two strips here, one is what's called 5050 class and the other is 3528 class. Now, this one on the left is actually white LEDs and the one on the right is red. I also have blue and other colours and you can pretty much get them any colours that you want. The cheapest way to get these on the roll is actually from eBay and they can cost between five to seven pounds each and the differences between the two we'll talk about now. The 5050 or the 3528 actually corresponds to the size of the LEDs themselves. So, as you can see here, the LEDs for the 5050 are a 5mm by 5mm and they come in about a 10cm row and you can cut the strip into pieces where there are the little uh, symbols for scissors. Uh, the other strip is the 3528, here we are, again it's a 10 centimeter dividable strip and on this particular one there's actually more divisions than that, one, one about every 5 centimeters. And you can see that it's actually 3.5 by 2.5 millimeters, but you get a couple more LEDs on the strip. So although they're smaller, you get a similar light output because there are more there. The waterproof stuff, what that actually means is that the strip itself is covered by plastic. So if I take this one out here and bring it up, you can actually, hopefully you can see that it's covered in a clear plastic sheet. This is actually very useful to have on the models because it means if you are flying anywhere where there's moisture or you land in grass where there's a bit of um, wetness still on the ground, um, you're not going to have any problems with that soaking into the backing paper. So I would always recommend you get the waterproof. The non-waterproof doesn't have this covering, it's a little bit lighter, but I would recommend that you always go the waterproof route. So let's talk about the wiring next, about how you actually make these up, and let's assume that we're going to cut off um, a 10 centimeter strip of this stuff, this is the 5050, we'll make this up for a, a, a lot of white. Um, we'll actually take it apart and we'll actually put it together. So, once we've measured how much of the LED strip we need on the model, then on each of the strips there's actually delineations about where you can cut, so here you can see. So what we'll do is we'll just cut this piece off and then we'll solder it up. So you use a very sharp knife and you go right between the two strips, right the way through. And there we are, we have our piece ready to go. And then what you do is use a very sharp knife and you just pare away the covering at the end to expose the two contacts. And that's what you solder to. You don't want to keep the soldering iron on them for too long, but you just want enough to 
put the wires on. Now the wire that I use for this is this kind of stuff. It's very small, it doesn't have to carry a lot of current. It's about 22 gauge. Zoom out a little bit, the camera's not happy with that. Um, so it's very small and easy to tag. So what I'll do is I'll very quickly just um, cut the ends off and we'll show you how to do the soldering. So to remove the material at the end, I would suggest you use a very sharp knife. I find these Exacto blades, these Exacto knives, are perfect for it. And what you want to do is just score the material, being careful not to go too deep, because you only want to get rid of the top, not actually cut the bottom part. And then very carefully cut through. So be very careful because you have these are super sharp blades. And then you can pick that piece off. So there we are, and with the fingernail, you can actually pull off any remaining material to expose the pads. There we go. Pull that off. So there we are, there's the two pads ready to do some soldering on. So what we'll do is we'll drop, camera's really struggling today, we'll drop a little bit of um, solder on each of those and then we'll pop a wire on. So there's a little bit of solder on the end. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more because it's really struggling to uh, an observing polarity. We'll connect the wires and again try to keep the soldering iron on for longer than necessary because all we want to do is get them to fix. So there we are, now we've got it, now we can connect this to a battery so I'll strip the ends and we'll have a look at it lighting up. So here we have one of our trusty 3S batteries. These strips work off 12 volts. So all you need to do is just connect them to the outer ports of the um, tap, or you can connect them to the Dean's connector. Now I'm just going to pop it onto the Dean's connector here and you'll see them light up. Pretty bright, huh? So, now we can put them together, we can put a little bit of heat shrink over the end to protect it, or maybe even a blob of hot glue, and we can actually connect them to the uh, model itself. Now on the back of these strips, they do come with uh, 3M tape attached, so you can stick them on. However, I found that it's sometimes worthwhile popping a cable tie over the ends because in a very hard crash I've had these um, things pop off so uh, that's not always a good fun. So the next thing we'll talk about is how you actually then wire them in to the model. The easiest way to do it is similarly to what we've just done there to turn it on is to actually connect it directly to the side of the model uh, on the other side from the battery where the power comes in. And if you connect it like this, then as soon as you plug the model in, the LEDs will come on. That's great if you always want the LEDs on when you're flying, and one of my models has lights on that work like this, but it means that you're always drawing that little bit of power and you're always um, having to look at them. If you wanted to have them so you could turn them on and off, then what you can use is this Turnergy RC controlled switch. Now you can get these from Hobby King, they're uh, only a couple of dollars each, and I have one on my big model, that's how I control the LEDs. And you wire it up like this. So the positive lead that would normally just go straight to the positive end of the uh, power system in the model, you actually put the switch in between because it just acts like a, like a push switch. And the other side is a little control wire that goes onto one of the spare channels on your receiver, either auxiliary or one of the gear channels. And by flicking that channel, then you can essentially just close or open 
the switch. Now that makes it very easy to use and um, gives you the option to control with one of these switches pretty much anything to be fair landing gear retracts other servos you name it but they're great for these little jobs to control lights so the last thing we'll do is i'll just zoom out we'll connect this little strip up to the battery and i'll put the trusty multimeter in between it so we can actually see how much amps these things actually draw to give you an idea so what we'll do we'll just do it with this one little three LED strip of 5050 class white LEDs and that'll give you an idea of how much it pulls so give me a second to set it up and we'll come back and have a look so here's the rig all set up apologies for having to put the desk lamp on it's the only way you can actually see the voltmeter but the LEDs are running now they're on I've actually put the voltmeter in series with the battery so you can see and you can see that it's actually pulling about 41 42 milliamps for that strip of three LEDs so it gives you an idea of how much it pulls so it's very very little and you get an awful lot of light output for a very small amount of additional battery power so thank you very much for watching I hope that video is useful for you please comment and subscribe and happy flying